Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, this <laughs> back issues. Um, back issues have become a bigger point of argument, contention. I'm not quite sure why. Um, mostly because I find it stupid. And, and to be fair, uh, when I find things that are dumb on the surface, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. I think it's a it's a weak point. If you're going to be in any kind of company uh, driving product or marketing or sales or whatever else, you have to kind of put aside what you think is dumb. Because if, if the customer is coming with something you view as dumb, then you have a, a you know, a, a potential to ignore a sale because you're focused on, um, on, on, you know, on dumb, uh, <laughs> which is not good. Um, so back issues have become a bit of a lightning rod. And why? Well, because, uh, one of the big argument points right now, and you're seeing this kind of getting exacerbated uh, in, in some of the sales data, is that uh, people who say, I don't like current comics, are have started to say with more frequency, I'm going to buy back issues, or I am buying back issues. And I think for a couple of years, uh, this was kind of ignored. Um, it was happening, uh, and and but uh, you know, for whatever reason, it was written off as you know malcontents or maybe just normal part of the business. Who knows? But uh, for whatever reason, people decided to ah, have back issues. I mean, that uh, you know, for, first of all, the, the challenge, like with many things, um, you know, people buy back issues all the time. It's kind of part of the comics business. It's part of. You know, retail shops have new issues and they have back issues. This has been the way it's been for decades. Uh, this is not new. So if we're talking about the direct market, back issues have always been a part of that. And back issue business has always been a healthy part of the business. And most comic shops, uh, with a few exceptions, will have, you know, half of their money coming from back issues. There's some rough kind of, you know, if... if the money coming from new comics usually is equivalent to the back issue money that's coming in. Sometimes less, sometimes higher, but, but generally you can have it in that same ballpark. It's going to vary by store, of course. Um, but, uh, but, but recently, as the friction has grown with uh, customers saying, I, I'm not buying new issues, I'm buying back issues, and then two data points come out in pretty quick succession that I think is fueling this new uh, argument, this new fight around back issues. Uh, the first data point was, hey, during the pandemic, things did not go as bad as we thought. And they didn't. Great news. Well, how could this possibly be? Marvel was, you know, for all intents and purposes, shut down for almost three months or and change. A bunch of titles got delayed and everything else. We're saying that, that uh, the comic business was healthy. How could it be healthy when a quarter of the number one publisher's books weren't being shipped? And, and, and same thing, several of the indies and, and DC, there were a lot of, we missed out on a volume of comics. It's hard to tell exactly how much, but, you know, if you think about the comic business of being 500 titles uh, a month, which is pretty close to accurate, then you're talking about 6,000 comics for the year. Well, at a very rough, very, very rough glance, we look at 2020 and we see that about 4,500 comics were shipped. Okay, so we're missing out on 1,500 comics. This is a poor way to do the math, and I'll explain why later, but just I'm trying to give you some quick visualization of it. Um, fewer new comics were shipped because for several months, no new comics were shipped. Okay, so how can things have been okay? We should have seen a catastrophic plummet of comic shops, retailers. Now, the reality is we did, sort of. Several retail shops did go out of business. We're not focusing on them because, unfortunately, when a retail shop goes out of business, um, it becomes yet another point for people to argue about why it went out of business. And, and there could be a lot of reasons why it went out of business. Everything from retail sucks to, uh, you know, the, the guy just wanted to get out of it to the product wasn't selling as well. Yes, there could be a lot of reasons. And and so it's it. It's it's always kind of a dodgy one to to really you know hang your hat on, um, but as the story has kind of evolved, this the second step to it is uh, comic creators have kind of gone to Twitter and and Facebook and other places, going, huh? I thought the comic industry was dying, guys, but looks healthy to me. Look, the comic shops are saying everything's selling. Looks healthy to me. And kind of that same kind of douchey, in, in fairness, it's it's the same level of douchery as the people who are like, everything is dying next month. You know, that all that kind of stuff is crap. 
Um, but the fact has come out, hey, one of the things that helped uh, you know, carry comic shops through were back issues. And this is common sense. Now, why is it common sense? Well, because think about it. If you're a, if you're a customer and you're going to a comic store and you're used to spending you know, $50 a week on comics, and for one quarter, three months, there are no new comics, but you're holding that $50, what are you going to do with your $50? Well, many customers bought back issues. They use that as an opportunity to buy things that maybe they always kind of wanted to buy and, you know, the money wasn't going anywhere else. So they, they put it toward back issues. And so what happened? Comic shops got a increase in back issue sales. Not the, not the most shocking, surprising, weird story in the world. That's what happened. And because it's a collector environment, because people bought some back issues and filled out some runs that even when the new comics were, uh, were, you know, shipping again, and they were coming to the shop. Um, the fact that it had kind of, you know, turned or you know turned up the interest in back issues meant people kept buying back issues. Now, you, you, you say you could make the argument. Some people do that. The only reason people start buying back issues was as some form of protest against the current comics coming out. And is that true? Some aspect of it is true. Sure, I'm sure that. Some people are fed up with current comics, don't want to spend your money there and buy old issues instead, buy things that they haven't read or different stuff instead. I'm sure that is true. And I'm sure that's happening. Is that the, is that the bulk of it? Again, who knows? We, we don't know. The, the one thing that we do know that we've now heard pretty reliably from comic shops is when new comics were not being shipped to the comic store, Customers came in and bought back issues. Again, this is not the most shocking, surprising data point in the world. People come in with money, they spend the money. They spend the money that would have gone to new issues on back issues. And that's what happened. However, this fact kind of rolling out has, uh, has kind of punctured a balloon to some extent. And it's, it's introduced some hurt feelings because... Uh, some creators are are you know visibly upset that uh, they feel like they're being outsold by creators in the past. And to be fair, I think this is a, a hang up or an anxiety that has existed for quite some time. You you see a lot of kind of current creators or or smaller names. And by the way, everybody's a smaller name when you compare them to legends of the past. I, I mean, no matter how. Tom King has a, a, a known name doing big comics, but Tom King's name is nowhere near, uh, you know, Stan Lee or, you know, Roger Stern or Frank Miller. He's not at that level yet. It would be impossible for him to be at that level. It's, it's the same reason why, you know, <laughs> in wrestling, Hulk Hogan is still a very known name, even though he's not actively wrestling anymore. And if you're, uh, I don't know, uh, Cesaro, uh, you don't have the same recognition as Hogan. You haven't been in the business as long. You haven't main evented enough events. It's just as normal. But regardless of all that, uh, the fact of back issues are selling has become triggering to people who are upset that the back issues are, are basically in their eyes drawing attention away from what they're doing. Um, I, you know, the, the problem is this is all normal, natural, and kind of a little stupid. It's the comic industry as a, as a business is healthiest when back issues are selling and new issues are selling. And frankly, uh, people who are writing current comics, and this is an area where I think Chip Zdarsky is very effective at what he does. Zdarsky knows that every now and then in his comics and his plots, he refers to something from celebrated back issue runs of the past and basically is able to tie into that love or that, you know, that whatever that memory is of that back issue run. And it works for him. He sells more books. Fans are like, oh, you respect the past. Cool. He's still churning out new stuff, but that's, that's how he's able to do what he does. The more surprising part are the people who don't. Like if you're a, a new comic writer without much of a name and you're coming into the space, frankly, the easiest, simplest, best thing you can do is, you know, go back somewhere related to the character of the book you're running, uh, you're about to write and find a run or a couple comics that you can tie into. 
even if it's very goofy. This is this would be like comic back issue fan service. Um, you should do that. It's 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 going to be the fastest. I mean, the, the crazy part is you see it rewarded, and you see it rewarded by everyone, not just new fans, old fans. I mean, people love Easter eggs. People love it. Like, hey, you know, this comic refers to this thing that happened twenty years ago. That was kind of the subplot in the book, and look, it's bringing it up now. People love that crap. Uh, old comic fans, new comic fans alike, they all love it. And I think that there's a number of creators. Uh, Al Ewing is another one who's probably tapped into this regularly, and he gets a lot of praise whenever he does it. Um, it's it again. It's more baffling when people don't do it, when people uh, re- reject uh, referencing things in the past. I know Vita Ayala's New Mutants run uh, borrowed little hints. Uh, not, not borrows the wrong word, but referred to little things about the Shadow King, and even there. That book is staking out its own, you know, methodology, its own, its own mythology. And, and frankly, there's a lot more it could be leaning on that it's not. And uh, why it's not is, is, again, it's a mystery. Vita would, would be able to, frankly, I think, generate a lot of fan support by simply tying into some of that kind of stuff. I think that's why Jonathan Hickman is able to do what he did on Avengers and, and on X-Men, because he... He provided some continuity fan service, and everybody goes nuts for that crap. So I, I do too, so I'm, I'm not disparaging it. But back issues, um, it saddens me to see it become yet another point for people to want to fight over. Back issues are back issues. I mean, they're, they're constantly being created. New comics come out. Three months later, they're back issues. And this ongoing history and story of comics is something cool, something to be celebrated, certainly not something to be afraid of or fearful of or angry about. And I get why it may be disconcerting or sad to think about, uh, hey, my my copy of Daredevil is not selling you know, as high as when Frank Miller was doing Daredevil. And to that, I would simply say, well, yeah, you're not Frank Miller. I'm so- sorry. Uh, maybe work hard one day and you will be. I, I think it's always possible. New new superstars being created all the time. You know, we don't have to, you know, it's not that you lionize the uh, the people who came before forever. It's but, it, but they do, you know, once you stick a really good run in the past, that's that's like the bank. That's the bank you get a draw from. That's the the stuff that you get a tap into to arguably make your your own run. Those are the shoulders that you're going to stand on to be, you know, to be taller. Nobody actually does that in real life. But but anyway, back issues are, are good. <laughs> it's a stupid thing to say. They're, of course they're good. Back issues are back issues. They're great. You should read them, and I have a lot of fun reading them. And for the love of God, it, uh, please stop fighting over if back issue, if you like people who buy back issues are somehow betraying comics. That's absurd. Come on. Just, just come on. Um, I, yeah, this fits into one of the dumbest things I've, 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 we're dealing with right now, and and an indication of like, can we please move past this timeline onto the next one, where people get upset over normal things and not stupid things? Thank you. Like and subscribe, and thanks for listening.